Good morning, Bush Hill Presbyterian Church. We are a church on a mission. We're on a field trip. Today, Earth Day, Sunday, we are celebrating the creation of God at Dyke Marsh. 465 acres of fresh tidal marshland here in the metro DC area. In fact, it's the largest tidal uh, wetlands uh, in Metro DC. So we will worship God in this space and remember God, our creator, who made the earth and lets us live here. Our mission at Bush Hill Church is this, as we grow in the knowledge of God's word and share Christian community, God changes lives through us. So whoever you are and wherever you are in the journey of faith, you're welcome to join us. This uh, is our last Sunday of only recording worship services. We will continue to host these worship services with videos to upload and you to find in the comfort of your home and on demand. But starting next Sunday, uh, the first Sunday of May, I think it's May the first Sunday of May. We will be gathering in the parking lot for our worship service at 1030. We will have recorded music. We, we ask you to come and be masked and we ask you to bring um, your own chair. Uh, and we can provide some, of course, for people who can't bring it. But we are so excited to be coming back together to worship God together in community. And if the weather is bad, we're going to go to the front porch um, and see how dry we can stay underneath the, the roof. So um, join us for worship and now let us worship God.
The psalmist reminds us that the earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and all who dwell therein. For it is God who founded it upon the seas and made it firm upon the rivers of the deep. The Lord of hosts reigns in glory. Let us worship God. Being willing to love God with our minds means that we're willing to think about how we live. We're willing to consider our ignorance and not use our ignorance as an excuse for not doing something. Being willing to let go of our sin means that we're also willing to be filled with the new life that Christ gives us. So let us confess our sins. Lord, we confess that we view our planet Earth, your planet Earth, as disposable. A source of endless resources that we can use for ourselves, a mere stopping place on our way to heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy upon us, sinners all. We love our plastic bottles, our plastic wraps, our plastic containers to use once and throw away as if it doesn't matter, but it does. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy upon us, sinners all. Our human activity, both intentional and unintentional, spreads garbage and invasive species that overtake and suffocate your native plants, O God, and the animals too. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy upon us, sinners all. Our greed has turned into global warming and our sloth into a lame and lackluster response that lets this crisis race out of control. Teach us again how to love the earth as your home, which we are privileged to live in and of which we are stewards. Help us to live more intentionally, more thoughtfully, to leave a better garden than that in which we have been born. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Hear the good news of God's assurance. God declares the creation to be good. We are among God's creatures and humbled that God calls on us to till and keep the earth with hope and inspiration to answer that call, to serve with God in keeping the garden beautiful. We place our trust in God to show us the way how to do this now. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Jesus Christ, crucified by human power and raised by God's power, forgives us and welcomes us to walk through this life with him by our side he tells us repeatedly, Peace I leave you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives, but as I give. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. The peace of Christ be with you.
With the burden of sin lifted, our hearts and minds are ready to hear and listen to the word of God. Let us pray now that God gives us ears to hear. O God, giver of life and all that is good, everything we have is yours. Open our eyes that we might see as you see, our ears to he- that we might hear as you hear, and our minds that we might understand that hope to which you have called us. As the scripture is read and your word proclaimed, let your spirit move within us, setting our hearts on your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture lesson today comes to us from the book of Genesis, the first chapter starting with verse 1. Listen to this first story of how God creates the world in which we live. O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness God called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seeds and fruit trees of every kind on, on earth, that seed might bear that fruit with seed. I'm lost. Excuse me a moment. Okay. Here we go. And God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. Psst, this is an apple tree. And it was so. And the earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And so it was. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. 
And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in God's image. In the image of God, human beings were created male and female were created by God and God blessed them and God said to them be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every other living thing that moves upon the earth God said see I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life. I have given every green plant for food. And so it was. God saw everything that God had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Come, Holy Spirit, as the wind and cleanse. Come, Holy Spirit, as the fire and burn. Come, Holy Spirit, as the light and illumine. Convict us, convert us, consecrate us, until we are all wholly thine. Amen. A few years ago, when I was an undergraduate at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, I had to fulfill some science requirements. And I don't remember choosing this deliberately, but God helped me pick an Introduction to Environmental Studies class uh, taught by Calvin B. DeWitt. This class still burns bright in my mind because it just so happened that Professor DeWitt was at once a, a deep Christian and a committed scientist. And he had this way of representing both of those things in this class. He has since published many things. He's a, a dedicated author and workshop leader and professor and lecturer. But he has written this book, Song of a Scientist. And I want his words to 
drench our souls today because of his amazing capacity to have a foot rooted in the Christian tradition and a foot rooted in the scientific community and can marry both of those and be a living witness to what it means to love God and love the earth which God created. He lives by four principles, which I would like to share with you. He says these four principles are not only based on scripture, but also they harmonize the results of scientific investigation of the biosphere and its creatures, including people. And he starts in Genesis, where we started in today's scripture reading. So his first principle is one, the earth keeping principle. The first and most important truth established in Genesis is that God is the single cause and origin. The universe, the planet, and the biosphere all begin with God. A second truth follows. God declares everything, God declares good, everything God creates. And still another is this. Neither the creation nor any of its creatures are gods, small g. In bringing home this last point, Genesis avoids the godly names sun and moon by calling them the greater light and the lesser light. The first chapter can be summed up as, in the beginning, God. The word dominion used in this chapter clearly does not mean domination. Instead, it is directly connected with the fact that humans are made in the image and likeness of God. In other words, they have a godlike role to play in the creation. They too create from what God originally created, and their dominion is to care for the earth as God the Creator does. Human beings are responsible to their maker, not to their own perceived self-interest, and certainly not to the sun or the moon or any other gods. So in the early chapters of Genesis prescribe for humans a sustaining relationship with creation, a loving, caring, and keeping. It's our calling, our vocation to keep the creation as God keeps us, so we should keep the creation. The second principle is the fruitfulness principle. The fruitfulness principle. Here, God gives the blessing of fruitfulness to all creation. Fruitfulness implies abundance and variety. God is no monoculturalist, but rather an extravagant creator with so much diversity in the creation. In Psalm 2, God, uh, the gifts of God's fruitfulness are celebrated. God makes springs pour forth into the ravines. It flows between the mountains. They give water to all the beasts of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. The birds of the air nest by the waters. They sing among the branches. God waters the mountains from his upper chambers. The land is satisfied by the fruit of God's work. So the earth and God are intimately connected principle of fruitfulness, which then includes safeguarding creation's long lineage of living creatures. It anticipates our enjoyment of creation and its many fruits, but it requires that we do not destroy the fruitfulness and variety that sustain creation. The fruitfulness principle is in accord with our scientific knowledge about what maintains the abundance of life upon which the biosphere depends, what makes it flourish. We and all human beings must make sure that we safeguard the lineage of plants and animals that live upon the earth. And we must preserve and restore the fruitful services of ecosystem 
for our own well-being and for the well-being of the whole creation and all its creatures. His third principle is the Sabbath principle. God's word requires us to punctuate our lives with periods of rest. The Sabbath is God's gift to help us get off the treadmill, to protect us from the hazards of continuous work, to give us time and space to pull our lives together again. It's a time to worship, to enjoy the fruits of creation, to rest and be restored. This biblical principle applies also to the land and the animals. Nothing in creation must be relentlessly pressed. From Exodus, for six years you are to sow your fields and harvest the crops, but during the seventh year, let the land lie unplowed and unused. Then the poor among your people may get food from it, and the wild animals may eat what is left. Do the same with your vineyard and your olive grove. And his fourth principle, the conservancy principle. He gave a talk once about uh, to the Long Island Garden Conservancy, and he looked up the word garden in his Bible uh, concordance, and he found that the Hebrew word abad means serve and is associated with Adam's work in the Garden of Eden. And he got very excited about this because he could see how human beings are meant to serve along with God in the garden. Genesis wants us to serve in the garden. The garden's service to us is implicit. Service from us to the garden is explicit. So that's what we're to do is serve with the gar God in, on the planet Earth. And now one more little piece building our houses inside God's house. The house of our creator, the most high creator of the universe, is the whole creation. And so we also live in this house, God's oikos. Uh, but in calling the earth God's house, we need to realize that God is not limited to the realm of creation, God is within the creation, but is completely unbounded by it. Some of the Psalms colorfully describe the temple of God's footstool. We live upon the earth as God's creatures and as God's stewards, and the tiny houses we build for ourselves are necessarily built within the Lord's greater house. Whatever we do within the economy of the human household, we do within the economy of God's household, within God's oikonomia. Quote, except the Lord built the house, they labor in vain that built it. Except the Lord keep, keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. From Psalm 127. If our oikos and oikonomia are to work at all, they must work within the Lord's oikos and the Lord's oikonomia. Because we find ourselves living in God's house, our work, our cultural endeavors, our farming, our business, our art, science, family life, it must all reflect the purpose of the householder. Our economy must be in accord with God's economy. Our little oikos must be in harmony with God's great oikos. We must not be divided against it. For as Jesus said, every kingdom divided against itself becomes a desert. And oikos, the house, falls on the house. Luke chapter 11. Keeping God's oikonomia in mind, our highest goal is to seek the kingdom of God in our own oikonomia, being of like mind with Jesus Christ, we pray, 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In a very real sense, our work on earth brings what Bishop James Jones calls an earthing of heaven, a singing in harmony and with rhythm, the anthems of heaven on the face of the earth. For all who work in God's kingdom, and who does not, this has deep meaning. If we seek God's kingdom, we must necessarily come to know how God's world works and what is right in the eyes of the Lord. Otherwise, we will not know how to act in God's economy. We need to understand the structure and the operations of God's creation, including the ways and means by which God bestows love upon the world in order to practice stewardship in our cultural endeavors. We need to know and respect God's economy. We need to hear and respect God's words to us. Jesus says, for as everyone who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice, I will show you what they are like. They are like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck that house but could not shake it because it was well built. But he goes on to say, the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment of torrent struck that house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. What we, what we build, what we build our lives, our church, our institutions, our economies upon, within the landscape of creation must have good footings and must be conducted in harmony with God's economy. That's what we must do. And so it's good uh, to remember the earth at least once a year and to be mindful of how we live our lives and science is showing us that God's creation is groaning under the heft of human intentional and unintentional abuse because we don't think about how we live. And so let us work together as a community of faith to remember God's economy and our tiny economy within it and make sure we serve with God in this garden called Dyke Marsh uh, in the bigger house of God's, the earth. And let all God's people say, Amen. We are looking at an eagle's nest here in Dyke Marsh, which is a sign of the health, the returning health of the Potomac River, that it can support uh, egrets and herons and eagles. And as we look at this eagle's nest, let's remember that God raises us up on eagle's wings, bears us on the breath of dawn, makes us to shine like the sun and holds us in the palm of his hand. God also knows that all people that are created in God's image still do not have the same amount of resources here on earth. And that's why God is always telling us to share what we have, to care for the poor, the widow, the orphan. And just as God expects us to serve with God in the garden, God also expects us to share with others in order to help them and raise them up so that they too can soar on eagle's wings. 
I invite you to join me in giving to Bush Hill Presbyterian Church so that our ministry and mission can soar on eagles' wings and we can help others, help them come out from under the cloud of fear and sadness and help them too to shine like the sun. I invite you to give generously to Bush Hill Presbyterian Church. You could go onto our website, uh, click on the Give button and give online. Or you could write a check and mail it to Bush Hill Presbyterian Church, 4916 Franconia Road, Alexandria, Virginia, 22310. Your giving is a sign of your support for what we are able to do through your generosity. Thank you. Let us pray. The earth is yours, O Lord, and the fullness thereof. You made this beautiful creation we call the earth. You give us so much from it. And so we give back to you our offerings and ask that you bless them as we are part of the earth and it is part of us. Help us not to live or die to ourselves, but to live and die to you, so that our care of your creation heals the earth and all your peoples. Help our care be shown through the giving of our time and service, our love and this portion of the money we offer, and let it be a blessing to your creation. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. As we move more deeply through this worship service and come into God's presence with all the prayers that are stirred up in our hearts, let us think of ourselves as, as a created creature of God, as God's restoration area. Uh, we are here and 
by the by virtue of our discipline to continually worship God every day we let God remove those things that invade our spirit and take over our lives and suffocate uh, that which is native to us and we are grateful that we can be restored to the freedom that we find in being human because God, we worship God and we let God be our creator and we know ourselves to be the created. So let us pray. Gracious God, how good it is to be in the midst of your creation, the natural world, which you created long before you created us human beings. You created night and day and land and sky and water and earth and fruitfulness and you also created Sabbath. You gave us a day to rest and to recenter ourselves and to remind ourselves again that you are God and we can relax because you're in charge and we turn our lives over to you. Hearing the wind through the trees is part of your voice to us. Hearing the birds sing is your song. Watching the waters flow is the sustenance of water, the sustenance of our lives. So help us remember that remembering that the earth is your creation and our home your house in which we can all build our tiny houses and live to remember that the earth is yours is as ancient as anything we know we use this canticle of the creatures written by saint francis of assisi centuries ago and it is our prayer today. All praise be yours, my Lord, through all that you have made. And first, my Lord, brother, son, who brings the day. How beautiful is he, how radiant in all his splendor. Of you, most high, he bears the likeness. All praise be yours, my Lord, through sister moon and stars. In the heavens you have made them bright and precious and fair. All praise be yours, my Lord, through brothers wind and air. All praise be yours, my Lord, through sister water, so useful, lowly, precious and pure. All praise be yours, my Lord, through brother fire, through whom you brighten up the night. All praise be yours, my Lord, through sister earth, our mother, who feeds us and produces various fruits and colored flowers and herbs. Praise and bless my Lord and give thanks, serving and conserving, serving with great humility. God in community, holy in one, hear us as we pray together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
on this Sabbath day, as you rest in God's creation, embrace the conservancy principle and pick up some garbage wherever you find yourselves, and then go forth into God's creation and rest within it, knowing that the love of God, the grace of our sovereign ruler, Jesus Christ, and the companionship of the Holy Spirit, which blows across this earth, bless you and keep you forevermore. And let all God's people say, Amen.